What's up, Stat Family? Told you we was coming back with another. We got Nikola Jokic proves Larry Bird will destroy today's NBA. This is a live reaction. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that sub button, and comment below. Let get it. Shout out to Big Bird. Shout out to Nicole. I promise it's legend. It's legendary. Definitely. What the announcer say when Bird shot the ball? Goodbye. She's gone. Real legend, man. Real legend. For real. Let's not play around with that name. That's one name you didn't. You're not playing with. I promise you. Big Bird going to come through for you. Let's get it started. We ain't going to hold y'all too long. One thing we're told 24-7 as NBA fans you know is to appreciate greatness. And where I say this the most is on social media. Now, this phrase, in theory, is fantastic. But when it comes to the appreciate greatness crowd, it's a one-way street. As for a lot of these so-called NBA fans, when they say appreciate greatness, it only applies to the modern NBA. Watch Larry Bird try to get his game off. Watch this. Garbage! I don't want to hear nothing else about Larry Bird. Garbage! What? And one player, of course, who catches a lot of heat from current day NBA fans is Larry Bird. And if you watch his highlights, watch his games, just look at him as a basketball player. Doesn't really fit the bill as a great talent, just off the eye test. I mean, guys like Dr. J, Dominique Wilkins, high flyers in the 80s, they fit more the bill or what a great NBA player should look like and how they should play. And despite Bird beating both those guys in the playoffs, outplaying them numerous times, Larry Bird by the eye test doesn't get as much credit as he deserves. As looking at fans today, what they say about Bird, too slow, can't jump, slow jump shot, and couldn't play defense. Now, even back in the 80s, nearly 40 years ago, people said the exact same thing about Bird in his prime. But looking at today's era, in the pace and space era, 35-43s per game, Larry Bird's skill set quite literally is built for the modern NBA. And what we're currently witnessing in Nikola Jokic is a slower and quite frankly fatter version of Larry Bird. I mean, when this year concludes Jokic, he could have two championships and three MVPs in four seasons. I mean, that is total domination by a guy who isn't even a top 100 athlete in today's era. And looking at Jokic's overall game, the passing, playmaking, scoring, how efficient he is when not being a great athlete, it debunks numerous narratives used against Larry Bird. As one thing I hear all the time is that current day players are, quote, bigger, faster, and stronger. Now, Jokic himself, just this year, has debunked that narrative. As versus the Lakers in three games, playing Anthony Davis, an elite athlete, crazy wingspan, lateral quickness, 29 points, 12 boards, 9 assists on 58% shooting. If you were playing NBA 2K, wanting to build the perfect defender, Anthony Davis is the guy you would build. But even AD, being AD, so gets embarrassed by Jokic, who isn't half the athlete Larry Bird was Showtime. in his prom. And just kind of speaking in generalities, when it comes to basketball, this game since day one has been about skill. Yes, being athletic is important to some players. But at the end of the day, skill determines how good you are and where you rank among the best players. I mean, someone like Derrick Jones Jr., an athletic freak, can throw around windmills or burst dunks, I mean, even Derrick Jones Jr. had to reinvent himself as an actual basketball player. Because if he didn't, he'd be like Terrence Ferguson, a great athlete with little or no skill. And LeBron back in 2017 
he spoke on this exact same topic, saying there are current players in the NBA who, quote, do not know how to play basketball. You're telling me there are players that play in the NBA that don't, professional players that don't know their role? I'll tell you one step further. There's a lot of players in the NBA that don't know how to play basketball. They don't, and they in the NBA do not know how to play basketball. But they can play basketball. I know how to play basketball. I can't play. There is guys on high level making millions. This time on the All Star team right now. On the All Star team. They are bad officials. And when it comes to the current group of NBA players, the guys in the next era, I mentioned and spoke about numerous times. This era of players, they're great athletes, but in terms of fundamental skill, severely lacking. Now, what do you blame for that? Maybe skipping college, the high school game being a joke, AAU. There's a lot of stuff you can blame for lack of development with American players. But even guys in this era who are coaching, they're seeing the exact same thing that a lot of us see. Great athletes, not great skill. And looking back at Jokic this year, he's in his ninth NBA season, which coincidentally was Larry Bird's last year in his prime in 1988. And that's one thing with Bird that is quite sad. This guy's prime got cut short after only nine seasons. And in terms of longevity, he doesn't have that in the slightest. And when it comes to longevity, I mean, I've said it a thousand times, ESPN, Twitter, Instagram, they're obsessed with longevity. And the stat I saw from ESPN is a typical ESPN stat, showing LeBron James having more total points than Larry Bird Magic combined. Now, ESPN's intention for the stat was to hide LeBron James and boost him up. But when I see this stat, I look at Larry Bird a guy who played nine healthy years, in comparison to LeBron James, who's played 21, and think, how did someone like Bird manage three championships, three MVPs, only one less LeBron in both those categories in nearly half the time? And despite Larry Bird having less than 22,000 career points, ranking 44th on that list all time, across the NBA, young fans, old fans, all regard this guy as a top 10 player in NBA history. And why I find that so special is looking at other NBA legends regarded as top 10 players of all time. You had LeBron James, 21 plus years, Kareem and Kobe played 20, Duncan and Shaq, 19, and then it came 18 seasons. I mean, the fact Bird in a decade's time won three championships, three MVPs, that is quite remarkable. And if you want to talk offensive peaks for small forwards or just players in general, Bird's all-around game was something special. The scoring, passing, efficiency, clutch time play, and impact on winning. Larry Bird checked all those boxes. And look at the numbers. Free throws. 85 to 88, this guy. 28.1 points, nearly 10 boards, nearly 7 assists, on 51-41, and 90 splits. And like I said earlier, Larry Bird's prime was cut short at only age 31. As during 1988, at age 31, averaged 29.9 points, the highest in his career to that point. And still looking at prime Bird, those four years, on average, took 2.5 threes per game. Now, of course, compared to the modern day players, the modern day teams, that number is egregiously low. But looking at Bird's scoring, when he came into the NBA, many forget, he was a power four and a double-double machine for a long, long time. And a lot of his points came at the rim, in the paint, off post-ups, and mid-range jump shots. For today's players, the mid-range game, in-between game, is virtually non-existent and a lost art. And once you get past that first line of defense that is so extended past the three, I mean, that mid-range game becomes oh so valuable. And looking at Bird's own era, guys like Kareem, Mark Eaton, Moses Malone, among others, those guys in the paint gave Larry Bird hell. And while they did, the bigs back then had no three-second rule. I mean, that rule single-handedly changed the NBA forever. I mean, listen to Luka Doncic, a current NBA player, citing this one rule why NBA scoring 
is so much easier than past eras and European basketball. You said that scoring 30 in the NBA was, hold on, I know you said scoring 30 in the NBA was way easier than scoring in Europe. Uh, but when I said that, a lot of people didn't agree with me, agree with me uh, two, three years ago. Yeah. I think now they're starting to agree more and more, but I always say it's because of the rules. The three point, uh, three seconds in the pain is huge. I don't think people realize how huge that is. Because, uh, you know, when I'm isolating, I watch the defender in the pain. So he, he got to go out at some point. So when he, he's going out, I try to attack. So right. that's a huge difference. Right. I mean, if labor in the early 80s was a walking 24 and 10 versus bigs in the paint who could camp it, what do you do in this era with a wide open paint that had the three second rule? And once again, looking back at that idiotic stat by ESPN, those types of funky stats, meaningless longevity stats, social media eats those up every day of the week. And like I said earlier, Larry Bird, when it comes to all time scoring, he ranks 44 currently. And by the end of the 2030s, Giannis will pass him, Dame will pass him, Beal, PG, Anthony Davis, even Kyrie Irving. When this decade's over, Larry Bird will be top 50 in scoring. And despite that, will still be a top 10 player all time. Like I've said in numerous videos, when it comes to peak versus longevity, a player's peak is much more precise for judging how good they were and how effective they were as an NBA superstar. Someone's longevity, I mean, to a certain extent, a good picture of them, but not the greatest way to evaluate a player and judge their career. So that right there is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. She's gone. Nicola, you're cold, man. You definitely in the bird family. I promise you that. You and Luca, it's a bird family. Dirt, Luca, Jokic, it's the bird family right there. I call them the bird family if y'all ain't know. Them the real bird family. The bird, that's why I call them the birds. Dirt, Luca, Jokic. Birds, them real legends, them the ones. Bird paid away. He started his own movement. <laughs> he got to be the strongest. He got to be. <laughs> he legendary, big bird, for real. That's my player bill right there. That's my player bill. We ain't got all the muscles. We ain't got all the jumping ability. But guess what? We can do. You know how to use our mind. You know, when you get on that court, hey, you got a hoop. All, all the hoop strong and shit, all that shit don't mean nothing. You get, on, get out there on that court, I promise you. <laughs> Do you know where you need to be? That's all that matters. I promise you. But they can't do nothing with Big Bird, man. He would torch his lead. You just heard Lucas say, Three seconds in the paint is a big key to a part why they be scoring. Back then, it wasn't no three seconds. It was straight centers down there. So you had to be right there. You had to be ready. You were going to be there. If you were going to come down there, the center was going to be there. It was either showtime, a foul, or a scuffle. It was one of the three. I promise you. Now, you go down there. Damn. Motherfucker got 20 free throws. Easy scoring. But they don't care. The rules important now. God, it's always important to know the rules of what you're doing. And we got we got real hoopers out here disrespecting real hoopers. It's crazy. <laughs> Then who who showed that video at the front of the beginning? They had Jordan blocking Bird. Bruh, everybody done got blocked before in their 
career of basketball, if you never have never lost a game or been blocked or been torched before, you're not a real hooper. I promise you. You're not a real hooper at all. I promise you. You have to be you have to been torched before. Like that's what makes you better. That's what makes you you. If you've never been torched before, you really not. You haven't been doing this for real. Salute. Thank y'all, Brave Family. Thank y'all, Stat Family, for watching the full video. We're going to be back with another video after this video. Make sure y'all stay prayed up. Y'all be safe. Y'all be good. You know?